Nope, thank you. Spirit world has been great, but time to go home. Hey guys, it's your girl Aisha, K Geek XX Chic, and we are back with another reaction to Avatar, The Last Airbender, the Netflix adaptation. We are now on to episode five, which is called Spirited Away. So the last episode, we finished up our Omashu arc with our group. We had Aang reconnect with Bumi, his childhood friend, and he got a very harsh lesson about what life has been like for people who've had to live through the last hundred years, particularly Bumi, because he actually is over a hundred years old. And again, really just reinforcing that this is a huge responsibility that Aang is taking on and that he really cannot run away from it in any way, shape or form again, even though he really didn't run away from it this time. And then we also had Iroh and Zuko have a little bit of a reunion after being separated when Iroh gave himself up to let Zuko escape. Zuko had the opportunity to abandon Iroh, chose not to, went back to his uncle and we got to see a flashback of how their relationship got so tight and so strong and why Zuko in particular means so much to Iroh. So we know that our group is now back on Appa and headed towards the north, but will they get there without another interruption? We're just gonna have to see. So let's jump into the episode. But just before I do, just a reminder that if you'd like to be notified of when new episodes drop for this or anything else that I am reacting to, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button as well as the notification bell. And if you love this video, please show it some love guys, some comments, thumbs up, all that stuff. I love it and I appreciate it so, so much. All right, that out of the way guys, let's get into the next episode right now. <laughs> nice Sokka. Katara, I need you to hurry up. Okay, we slicing him up, girl, yes! Let's go, let's go! She's a quick learner. Katara, come on, cardio girl. Lift up them long legs. Y'all have a flying bison? That's what I thought. That was really too close, y'all. Appa being the G that he is every time. That's something I saw the Earthbenders do. Mm. Thought I'd try a waterbender version. Bending just got rough. That's a mark of skill, Bender. Period. Let her know. Hey, how was I supposed to know she was a Fire Nation soldier? Didn't you have a girlfriend back in Kyoshi Island? Sir, being a Lothorio is not working out for you. Pretty. Fire Nation. Why would they do Sorry, this? ugly. It's the Avatar's job to protect the natural world. Honey, you knew you were the Avatar for 15 minutes. Out of death comes new life. This will be a forest again. That's what you should see. It's true. As destructive as fire is, it actually is some of the best fertilizer for soil. If you look at some of the beautiful places that have come up when volcanoes have erupted, oh my gosh, there's a creepy child. Hey, we lost? I mean, I'm perfectly clean in this completely deserted place. And waka waka. She's like, you are a silly one. I will grant you a smile. Sokka! No, wait. Good job, Katara. You scared the daylights of that little girl. Clearly, they're super fans of outsiders. The firebenders just wanted to clear a path as they moved through the mountains. And that's why they burned down the forest? But after our crops started dying, our, our animals stopped grazing. It, it, it's almost as if the land itself had gotten sick. I mean, wouldn't you be sick of it too? The people are beyond this world. I can get them back. Explain! Most people would call that unusual, wouldn't they? Lieutenant G? Unless they were an idiot. Mizuko, this is why everyone's got is your energy. This is why everyone's your enemy. You just gotta... Some of those thoughts to investigate. No. need to stay in your head. He hates you so bad, and you know what? I'm with him on this one. Working with no support in a forgotten little corner of the world, and yet... Why don't you go marry him then, Azula? You ties would be perfect together. I'm sure he's looking for a young bride. And Azula? Mm-hmm. Chow didn't discover the Avatar. Zuko did. Just make sure you remember. Displayed resilience and dedication. Mm, take notes. That's what I expect from the future heir. Mm. Not self-serving flattery and coy whispers. What's that? Hello? Yeah, he's got your number, sis. Run away. Sadly, they're exactly alike. That's what's so wrong is that he's actually twisted just like her. You're going to hop into the spirit world, grab the lost folks, and hop back. Sounded a lot more confident. See, before. honestly, me and Sokka actually share the same like logical fear of these things. It's like, oh, you're getting into some of that demon stuff. Okay, I'm gonna be in the village. You just ring me when this is all over. It's impossible for you to do everything. It's like Boomy said. The 
Avatar has to do the impossible. Yeah, Boomy's a little crazy, though. The only thing that's impossible that you can do that other people can't do is master all four elements, but even the other Avatars didn't get everything right. So, what do we do? Meditate! Clearly! And how will we know that this works? I'm not sure. I'm getting hungry. Hey! Do you mind? Right? Trying to get in the zone. Concentrate here. Hmm. <laughs> the annoyance. This is where the monk side comes through. What if one of them has to pee? Hey, yo, we didn't ask to go in the spirit world. Aang, breath. Somehow I brought you guys with me. How is that possible? I don't know, I'm the Avatar. We're in the spirit world. Let's hang out here. They can't find us here, right? Right? We don't want to cause trouble. We never ever caused trouble. Sir, is your middle name oblivious? But you remember hearing me. Sort of. He might remember more with some money. Well, huh? As a matter of fact, no. I don't remember anything. But I heard the Avatar might be traveling with some waterbenders. Oh, well, damn. There what we go. Say? The Avatar. He's with some waterbenders. Yeah, they all know. It was that canyon guy. He said the Avatar bought us canyon crawlers. Everybody knows Zuko. You didn't think that secret was going to stay quiet, especially since it's Aang's telling everybody. Hope you didn't need that money. I'm going to lose everything. Shh, breathe. Good night. <gasps> Arden! Is that you, girl? That looks disgusting. Arden! She looks so good. A low life bounty hunter? Oh, judgy. Big talk for a little boy. <laughs> I was like, please don't fight her. It's a girl. I'll let it pass because your dad's kind of cute. Ooh! Sis has got a good eye. <laughs> I was like, I'm interested. She said I was cute. <laughs> Clearly a woman with discerning tastes. Oh, is that a frog or a froggy thing? Just breathe, Sokka. Assuming they realize they don't belong in here. None of you belong in here. Rube, well, you brought me here. That is one big birdie. Wow. Birdie. <laughs> I am no birdie. He's an howl. I am the spirit of oh. knowledge itself. But you're still a howl. The longer they stay, the more dangerous it will become for them. Dangerous? Dangerous? <laughs> Sokka heard that. That should be the least of his worries. I mean, if a 20-foot bird was standing in front of me who happens to be a predator, I'd be worried about that too. Stone hut, not far, beyond the woods. He may know what's become of your friends. Aren't you supposed to know everything? Didn't you say you're the avatar of knowledge or whatever? And remember, stay on the path. <sighs> Have your claws all up in my face? And you wonder why no one wants to train with you. Could have hurt him. That's his fault. Sure, sure. He should have been better. Except this wasn't about the trainer. Oh, look at her come with the truth. Azula, you're the best. Everybody knows that. Except your dad. But that only means their minds are open to new ideas. And so they are ready when the solution reveals itself. He's going to try to teach you something. Philosophically. Her loyalty is bought and sold. How can you trust someone like that? I mean, she goes where the money is. Commander Zhao knows this, and he is already making moves while we have yet to draw our tiles. The game references, it's so deep. Tell me about this avatar. Mm, she's a bad girl, but you know what? It's hard to so I gotta stand. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> Her and Fire's Addy, you was I. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm gonna simp a little. Just deal with it. I will say be fine as long as we stuck to the path. Friday? Um, sure. We're on the path. We're on the path. Never mind, run. Get off the path! The spirit of the forest. Your teeth look terrible. Can't bend in here, baby. I can't bend. Look out! That's a girl. What is wrong with you, spirit of the forest? Hey, Skunk, you That's right. Stay away from his baby her. sister. Run! Run! I mean, Sokka kind of already got thrown. I don't know how much more running he can do. So what was all that hot breath exactly? Oh, hello, fox people. Is it a nine-tailed fox? No. I need to get to my friends before they get eaten by that monster. Not a monster. It's hurt. That's what pain does to you. It changes you into something that you're not. Very true. Do you always make jokes when you don't want to talk about something? Amen. Didn't I say he uses humor to deflect? I hope you can recombobulate. What was on your tail? Be careful. The fog can be... 
You tell me this now as you're running away? Foxes be foxing. <laughs> now what? <laughs> That's young you. If you had a message for your younger self, what would it? <gasps> ah! Oh wow, she pushed you right into a memory. Has it really? What? I mean, maybe the spirit world ain't so bad. We'll just hang out here forever. It's just been so long. She's like, I saw you at breakfast. Of course, we had to come right back to this memory, huh? But their houses are made of snow. I'm confused. They shouldn't burn. No, I'm not going in there. Honey, you can't change the past no matter how hard you want to. It's one of the hardest things. When you see these things, you think you can change it, but that's why you can't keep revisiting it. What she wishes she could have done. Or did she actually try to do this? Wait! It's me. I'm the water bender. She was always going to do it, Katara. She would never, ever, ever let you go before her. That's what a mom does. So much despair. Dang, who the hell are you? Uh -uh, mm -mm, nope, thank you. Spirit World has been great, but time to go home. To Sokka. To my son. Oh. Well deserved. If you hadn't have been on the boat and stepped in, we all came through in one piece. That's all that matters, right, Hakoda? Sure. <laughs> Look at the difference. Katara's like, I just want to stay close to you, mom, and hugs her to death. Sokka's like, thanks, dad. Peace out. <laughs> I'm kidding, I know. One of them is no longer with us. The truth is, not everyone is meant to have people's lives in their hands. That's what you took from a teenager taking his very first trial? Okay. No room for improvement ever, huh? All right. Your dad was kind of a dick, Sokka. It's not your fault. Something you and Zuko have in common. <laughs> Give in to your despair. You again. Oh. Hmm. How you wish for it. I'm sorry, what was that? Someone who can resist. Thanks. That can't be possible. You look terrible. That's my old friend, the Avatar. Do I Bro, really? do you have like a spinal column? But you know all about stealing, don't you? Perhaps you come to return what you stole from me. I'm 12. Now why would I let you play with my food? Those sound effects are very unappealing. It's a giant eye. Do I just poke, just poke him right in there? This place is quite nice. Let's stay here forever. Oh no. The face of someone he loves. This is real. One of the last games we played. Hey. <gasps> Cheater. Cheater. Aang really is going to stay here forever. How is this possible? How are you? I mean, spirit world. I don't know what I'm doing. But now you're here. Aang, I can't tell you how to be the Avatar. Well, what's the point of you then? I don't know anything. You know a lot more than you think. I doubt that. <laughs> How am I supposed to save the world if I can't even save... Your friends? My friends. They're somewhere in the fog. Ah. It is the hunting ground for Cole, the face stealer. He preys on those yeah. paralyzed by despair. His regular face is pretty nasty. I see why he wants to steal their peoples. Cole will hold them there until he's ready to feed. When that happens... I hate the word squelching. Cole is a primal spirit. I don't care. Dangerous and ruthless predator. Bring it. Previous avatars have tangled with Cole. And none of them could take this guy out? I need to talk to Roku. Except Roku's temple is in the Fire Nation. Awkward. There's something I need to tell you. Quickly now. Couldn't have done anything. 
If you thank you, that. someone needed to say it. He you would have gone that day. He would have perished. You couldn't have prevented the war. No. It's not your fault. Thank you. Someone needed to say it. Let go. Can we talk about it when I get back? Of course. Will you be here? Once I save my friends, we'll have more time. Yeah, he's not really agreeing with you. But hey, you know, you needed that message more than anything else. I'm going to make this right. And I'm going to save my friends. I promise. Let them know. Sometimes it feels like we'll always be alone. Well, you'd have friends, Zuko, if you weren't such a dick. Interesting, including Azula with this speech. And remember what it is we're really fighting for. The ones we love. He's getting smarter, flying at night, less people possibly seeing him. Guide you through the most treacherous of times and the darkest of nights. Into the belly of the beast, my boy Aang goes. Alrighty. Okay, guys. Well, that was the latest episode, and we definitely got a little bit more deep with this one. Not a lot of bending, not a lot of action. Gotta save those budget coins. <laughs> But it's okay, because honestly, this show wasn't all about the bending. It was very much telling a story, a character story. And this was definitely one of the episodes that was dedicated to talking more about the characters and some of the deeper things going on with the people that we've been exposed to so far. And really, I'd say some of the biggest ones were around Katara and Sokka. We know from episodes one and two that they have their own traumas that they've gone through, particularly through Katara. She's been having that recurring memory of her mom sacrificing herself to protect her. It's very understandable that that would be a demon that she wrestles with all the time. The guilt, the self-blame, as I've said on this channel with other reactions, if you've watched them, I say this kids, they have a tendency to blame themselves for situations when things happen when they're young because they're not old enough to understand and put perspective on why people make decisions. And for Katara, of course, she probably feels responsible, feels like if it wasn't for her, her mom would still be there, not understanding that that's just what happens with most mothers. Their child is everything. Most mothers would always put their child's life above their own. And for her mom, there was no other decision to make. It wasn't a sacrifice that she would regret. I'm sure if she could see her mom in the spirit world right now, her mom would tell her, if I had to do it again, I would. But it's still hard for Katara. And again, that's a lot to carry around. And unfortunately, Ko sees that and he's feeding on that deep set guilt that she fear, feels and that fear of possibly being the source of someone losing their life again, right? That'd be something where you know, I'm sure Katara worries about her brother and everybody else who cares about her and then potentially losing something in protection of her, which is probably another reason why she's so driven to get better at, at waterbending so she is able to defend herself in the next time uh, she gets into a situation like that. And then we touched on Sokka. Sokka always feeling like he's not living up to the expectations of his father. His father is the leader of their village and he's the firstborn son. There's a lot of expectations that come with that. And it looks like, unfortunately, there are certain things that his father felt that Sokka did not quite get up to par with. And again, as I said in the episode, super unfair for him to expect Sokka to be immediately good at something. Sometimes people have a natural talent for things. Sometimes they just got to put some effort into it and they can get really proficient. Saying what he said was not necessarily the right thing or a nice thing to say. Obviously, he didn't know Sokka was listening, but it's still something that Sokka struggles with. And that's one of the reasons we see now he keeps bringing up the fact that dad put me in charge. I was in charge. It's my job to protect the village. Like this is why it's so important to him because he is still trying to live up to this measure he thinks his father wants of him. And it's sad, but a lot of kids go through this, especially with parents that are more demanding than not, or parents that don't know when or how to let their children know that their their efforts are seen and appreciated. Yeah, when they're not getting it or worse, all they get is criticism. It really does create despair, as we heard Ko say to Sokka, that there is a despair there for him, a worry, a fear, 
that he'll never be good enough for his dad, which will translate into, at a larger scale, never be good enough. And so, yeah, it's good to get some insight into the psyche of both of these characters and know some of their deep set fears and what kind of drives their characters now and the decisions that they make and the way that they handle certain situations. With Aang, you know, that Ko tried by showing him the thing that he misses most, his biggest regret, that being his home, the fact that the air nomads were wiped out. He has been living with the guilt of not being there when the biggest battle of his people happened, but also the fact that he's had several people to his face say that it's all his fault that these things happen that if he had been there the war wouldn't have happened that's you know what happened at the temple wouldn't have happened and of course that's already piling on to the guilt that he was feeling but thankfully the manifestation of Gatso was so important for him and hearing that very important line that this was not your fault and you wouldn't have been able to do anything you would have died that night with the rest of us and that's exactly what would have happened Aang again only knew he was the avatar for like 15 minutes before this attack happened he didn't know how to access his powers he didn't know the other elements he couldn't have done anything he wasn't even near actually that's not true i guess he could have maybe channeled the avatar of the last air avatar bender but again he didn't even know how to do any of that at that point so point being one of the things that was brought out in the animated series and i'm sure they're going to bring out in this show as well is that what happened to ang happened for a reason he wasn't meant to be an avatar a hundred years ago that wasn't what was needed at that point what happened with the fire nation wrong, horrible, awful, would have been great if it never happened. However, the Aang that came a hundred years later with everything that he had, all the knowledge he had, but also the youthfulness, the childlikeness, the connective spirit, the empathy, all those things, those were needed as Aang was as a 12 year old, exactly in the time that Aang broke out of that ice. So what happened was exactly what was supposed to happen. And everything happens, as I said, for a reason. So even though Aang can't see it right now, he wasn't ready a hundred years ago. Sadly, Sozin was. That is why he's appeared when he's appeared. Now, now is the time. Now is when everything is supposed to come together. So again, Aang doesn't realize that. And of course, there's a lot of people who are saying it's all his fault, but they're going to see soon enough that Aang is exactly where he's supposed to be and exactly when he's supposed to be, even if he can't see it yet. But yeah, it was really nice to see that reunion with Gatso as well, though, because Aang really needed an old friend and someone who really knew him and they could have those vulnerable conversations with. And thankfully, he now understands that, yeah, hopefully he can learn to let go of that guilt. And more importantly, he knows now that he's got to go and talk to Avatar Roku about how to get the best of this co-guy to let his friends go, because clearly fighting a spirit world creature is not the same as fighting as the avatar in the real world. So that was pretty much the majority of the episode. We had a little bit of Zuko and of course him still trying to find the avatar, discovering that the secret is very well out. Again, he's assuming that it was just the Fire Nation people that were supposed to keep it quiet, but forgetting that Aang has a mouth and that he's been telling everybody who could listen that he's the avatar. So... <laughs> So of course that was going to get out and spread very quickly. He was a bit disheartened by that, but his uncle has shown him another way by hiring mm, my favorite girl, Miss Arden, uh, AKA June, who is a bounty hunter and a damn good one. So I look forward to seeing more of her in the next episode or maybe two. I'm not sure exactly how long she'll be there, but yes, we see now that they have that additional resource since Zhao at the moment has definitely got the advantage as far as figuring out where Aang is ahead of Zuko. So we'll have to see how that goes as the chase goes on. And yeah, we ended the episode with, actually one thing I should bring out when I was talking um, about how everyone has their fears and all the things that they have to face, it, the, the ending speech where Gyatso is talking about how pain reshapes people and how, you know, if you don't feel like you, well, I can't remember all the, the depth of the speech, but basically talking about how, oh yeah, how you can be feel really alone at times and how your pain and your suffering is the only thing that keeps you company. And then they showed that shot of Azula of all people. As I said in the last episode, during the animated series, they really didn't touch too much on Azula as a character. It was a very light swipe with her. She was very much kind of a one dimensional character. I'm liking that the show is attempting to give us a little bit more of a rounded viewpoint of her and where she's coming from. And in this episode, we see that she was trying to play to what she thought her father would like, you know, as far as saying the words that she thinks he'd like to hear. And of course, trying to affect an outcome that she wanted with the Zhao situation. But in the end, we see that her dad reminded her that Zuko has accomplished some things. Like he, he didn't let her just skate over the fact that Zuko was the one who found the Avatar and that Zuko has shown resilience and determination 
nation. And that that's the kind of thing that he respects. And Azula obviously didn't say anything in that moment. And we see that annoyingly, um, uh, Ozai kind of smirked when he saw that she stormed away because he likes pitting his kids against each other. He's a, he's not a very, he's not mentally well, hot but not mentally well. But anyways, we see that this really bothers Azula because as we saw in the last, not last episode, but the one before, what frustrates her is that she doesn't feel like her father really sees the efforts that she's put in or sees that she's really good or appreciates her talents. And unfortunately, a lot of that probably has to do with the fact that she's a girl, not, nothing else. If she was a son, he probably would give her a little bit more attention. But the fact that she's a girl, he just kind of discredits the fact that she is just as talented, if not more talented than Zuko. And again, if we're gonna follow what we see in the animated series, Azula was actually a better bender in many ways than Zuko was. So really she, her talents were actually ahead of her brother. And again, she did everything that she thought her father wanted. She very much tried to emulate her father and she's very much like him in many ways. So she really thought that, hello, like he should see me as a contender for the succession of this throne just as much as my brother but it's just not happening. And so it's understandable where her frustration is coming from. But again, the issue, and again, we'll have to see because they really have not shown Azula and Zuko interacting yet. We have no idea what their relationship is like. Whereas in the animated series, we started to see pretty early on that Azula just was toxic to Zuko. Like there was literally no relationship there. It was very, very, very unhealthy. But we haven't seen any, anything in this show yet. So I'm not sure if they're gonna plan to do the same thing with making Azula as toxic to Zuko. I'm hoping not, because again, I feel like a lot of it just didn't make sense. But anyway, I was going to say that her frustration and her anger are very valid as far as what she's feeling around how her dad is treating her. The problem is that she's taking all that anger and frustration out on Zuko. I do think it was interesting that they included Azula in that. And as I said, it kind of shows that they're trying to give her a little bit more of a human side as a character, as opposed to just being a fairly one, dimen one dimensional villain like she was in the animated show. And I appreciate that. I do like that we get a chance to see that. So yeah, again, Another deep episode, but I appreciate that they're going into the character development and trying to flesh out these characters and round them out more. And in a show like this, we only have eight episodes, only three left now. You need to build up your characters somehow, and we're not gonna have multiple episodes to do it. So yeah, I appreciate it, and I did enjoy the episode, so I hope you guys enjoyed watching along with me. If you did, please show some love to this video, and I will see you in the next one.